I stopped using my iPhone and started using Graphene OS on August 21st, 2021. As the date of this recording, it has been just under three weeks that I've been using Graphene OS on a Pixel 5. I'm going to go over some of the good and bad things I found out about it. So let's start with the good. This might be unique to me, but I kind of just feel better. This isn't really a feature of Graphene OS, more so a perk of being decoupled from a giant organization. I know some people say no matter what you do, they know everything already and there is nothing you can do, so just give up. And I fully disagree with this. As long as you make it more difficult for these giant organizations than just handing over everything because you've given up, then you're doing a good job. Having a de-googled Android phone means your device isn't constantly checking in with Google or Apple if you had an iPhone. Your photos aren't being scanned if you're using their service, and you just have a bit more privacy. My first impression after installing it was, wow, it's bare. It doesn't even include a background. It's just black with a few apps installed. So if I'm being honest, after being away from Android for 11 years and on iOS, it was a bit overwhelming at first, especially considering there's no app store by default. The next great thing about it is how it's privacy first. On the initial setup for my install video, you might notice there was no prompt to create an account. Yes, you can usually skip it on Google, Android, and iOS, but it seems like they're always prompting you to create an account. With Graphene OS, you don't need to. One other thing related to privacy that might be obvious, but I think is still worth saying, as a de-Googled ROM, there is no Google. No Play Store, Maps, Drive, Gmail, or Google Chrome browser. You are independent of Google, and their apps are not embedded in the OS. Next, I want to talk about how Graphene OS is security first. It has a lot of under-the-hood security features you don't really see, along with some you do see every day. There's two features specifically I thought were worth mentioning in this video. The first is pin scrambling. How many times are you with some friends or at the grocery store and there's a nosy person shoulder surfing as you're typing in your pin code? Everyone knows how the pin pad typically looks and can tell based on the area you press which numbers you hit. Graphene OS actually scrambles the pin pad every time you need to unlock your phone so you don't need to worry as much about shoulder surfers. The next feature which isn't as visible, but I think is highly important to your privacy, is MAC address randomization. Every device that connects to the internet has a unique MAC address assigned to it. You can think of a MAC address as a fingerprint for your device. While this can be useful as a network administrator, like most things in life, large organizations have figured out ways to abuse this. When your phone's Wi-Fi is on, it's looking for available wireless networks to join. It does this by sending out a probe request, and this probe request contains your MAC address. Big brand stores monitor these probe requests and can track your location around the store. Since that MAC address is unique, they can track you every time you visit different locations and certain patterns or habits you have while shopping. If the big box stores had this technology to do this, then it's really limitless who could be tracking you with this method. Graphene OS by default randomizes your MAC address for these probe requests and each time you connect to a network. This means that your privacy is preserved if you're walking around a store or your city and your phone is searching for a Wi-Fi network. In addition, each time you connect to a new wireless network, such as your home or open Wi-Fi at your job, your MAC address is randomized. This means they are unable to track the times you connect or your habits while using that connection because your MAC address is changing each time. To me, this is huge. There's no reason why you need to essentially provide your fingerprint when connecting to a network or just walking around. I believe Android 10 supports this, so it might not just be unique to Graphene OS, but I know iOS doesn't support it. Lastly, the battery life. Since you don't have all the extra bloat and Google services running in the background, this battery just keeps going. I get around two days of use out of it. Unfortunately, Signal video chat drains the battery pretty fast. Otherwise, I think it would last for around four to five days. So now that we went over the good, let's talk about some of the downsides. There is no Google Play installed. While this is good, it's also bad if you're trying to get some apps. Luckily, there are some alternates. The first I recommend is F-Droid. F-Droid is an app that has a collection of FOSS apps, otherwise known as free and open source software. The second store I suggest you install if F-Droid doesn't have everything you need is Aurora Store. Aurora Store is an app that allows you to download Google Play Store apps without actually having to install Google Play and other Google services. Next, let's talk about the camera. To put it bluntly, it kinda sucks without the Google Camera app. The default app on Graphene OS doesn't take full advantage of the camera hardware, and I haven't put any time to try and look for alternatives. Android Auto is another one of those things that I really wish worked, but I can live without it. I have a car that supports it, and I really liked using Apple CarPlay in the past, but I survived without it for 13 years before this vehicle, 
so I'll manage. The toughest issue to overcome has been push notifications not working for a lot of apps. So the issue isn't that notifications don't work, it's that a lot of apps use Google FCM. FCM is a cross-platform messaging solution that developers can use at no cost. It requires Google services on Android to work correctly, Thus, on a de-googled phone, these notifications fail. By default, a lot of apps in the Play Store use this service, which means notifications won't work. Now, apps that implement notifications without the reliance on Google services do work. The default apps on the phone all work with notifications, phone, messaging, alarms. Additionally, Signal, the secure messaging app that I use, also works. So basically, the core apps I use work, and that was probably my biggest concern. Now, the apps which don't work that is kind of inconvenient, the first is PagerDuty, which my job has me use to be notified of issues. Luckily, there's an option to have the service call your phone instead, so I use that. And the other one is Uptime Robot, which I use to monitor services that I run, such as the Ethereum node live stream I have running. Other than that, I've learned that I don't need notifications from a lot of the apps I used to use. And honestly, the huge decrease in notifications has been kind of nice. So, final verdict, I'm keeping it. For me, the downside inconveniences don't outweigh the upsides. I think I was fooling myself by trusting Apple all these years and thinking they prioritized my privacy. They are very good at marketing. They recently announced they're going to delay the local device photo scanning, but I don't want to wait around and put my fate in their hands. Someone once told me that you should educate yourself about your money and how it's invested because no one will care more about your future and money than you will. I think that same concept applies to digital privacy and security take the time to educate yourself and learn. I'll be doing a video in a few weeks demonstrating some of the specific apps and configuration changes I made on Graphene OS. Until then, so long and thanks for all the fish.